Welcome <laughs> back to I Did This Instead of Killing Myself. This is a stand-up comedy podcast based in Greenville, South Carolina. My name's David. It's the week of... What week is it? October uh, 10th, 2022. Um, I am recording this for the first time. There may or may not be somebody else here trying to do this without without it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're not paying attention it's fine it's good it's good anyway i'm recording this early on a thursday and uh i i'm not here right now so that's why i'm getting this out early but i'm really excited about this week's episode and this week's guest super excited our guest today justin blackburn justin is a life coach poet comedian basically a renaissance man he's also the self-proclaimed godfather of greenville comedy along with nick shaheen and uh this dude does it all and uh just got to know him recently he's from Asheville, but um this he he literally i mean you'll get to see it in the interview but i kind of want to hype it up because you really want to listen to this one um so like i said he's super creative um he is the author of this book that we got uh, it's hard to get there when you're already there. Check it out. These poems are hilarious. Um, but if I had to describe Justin quickly, um, he's a very positive guy. Uh, very funny. Um, he uh, described himself as kind of an anti-comedian um, in this interview. Um, he kind of went against the grain and went out and enjoyed bombing. We talked about that and leaning into it. Um, and he, he just um, wants to go against the grain. So in this interview, uh, we talked about a lot. Uh, I'm, I just did started therapy recently and um, I really got a, got a lot out of it because he talked about how he does life coaching with his clients. Talks about the importance of being genuine, being your authentic, true self, empowering people, positivity, all good stuff. Um, you can check out more about his life coaching stuff at creatingyourselfcoaching.com and follow him on all the stuff linked below. Uh, Justin's awesome. I think you'll enjoy the interview. I really enjoyed it in the conversation, and I hope you stick around for the whole thing. But for the interview, though, here's what's going on this week in local comedy, the week of October 10th, 2022. So tonight, Coffee Underground, 7 o'clock, hosted by No Expectations Comedy, 6.30 sign up. Um, on Tuesday are the radio room at eight o'clock hosted by Bill Reiner, Jeff Thompson, or myself, um, show up, sign up. Also on Tuesday, we have the art bar hosted by Patrick Fowler. That's in Columbia at eight 30. Also on Tuesday, we have the auditorium in Asheville hosted by James Herod. That's a nine o'clock show on Wednesday. We have the VFW mic hosted by Tom Emmons, swamp rabbit comedy. That's at six 30 at the VFW post 9273, um, in Piedmont, South Carolina. Also on Wednesday, we have the Disclaimer Open Mic at the Asheville Music Hall at 8 o'clock, hosted by Kerry Goff and company. Thursday, Comedy Zone show is back. Jokes Out Loud Open Mic at 8 o'clock, hosted by Brandon Rainwater. On Friday, we have Habiba's All Jokes Aside, hosted by Dante Anderson. It's a 9 o'clock show. Message Dante for details. And this weekend at the Comedy Zone, we have our celebrity comedian Alex Thomas. He's got one show on Friday at 8 and two shows on Saturday at 6 and 9. Tickets available at greenvillecomedyzone.com. Wow, made it through it. Was that that bad? It was fine? <laughs> okay, well, it's not over. I got to. All right. <laughs> hope you guys enjoy the interview and I hope you uh, have a great week. Here it is. It's a real title. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're starting. Justin Blackburn drove down from Asheville. Super yeah, thank pumped. you for having me. This is Dude. awesome. Thanks for coming, great man. Great setup here. This is this rules. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I appreciate you waiting. Justin just did a workout downstairs at Anytime Fitness. About, about for, seven minute workout. For seven minute Eight, workout. Yeah. yeah. You didn't even have a membership. Just yeah. walked right in. Well, yeah. I just that's, asked. That's lit. They said, yeah. 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 
Yeah. So, dude, I uh, you're you're awesome. By the Thank way, you. so like, are you. No, I appreciate it. But yeah. like, I've only met you a few times, like before show, before and after shows in Asheville. Yeah. And everything. And uh, so, like, I'm looking forward to like getting to know like your background in comedy and everything. Yeah. Thank you. Because I literally don't. Some of the guests, like, I know stuff. Yeah. Going back, but I started in Greenville. You started in Greenville. I would say I kind of started the Greenville scene with Nick Shaheen. Nick Shaheen. Yeah. When Adam, when Adam Schulte, he'll reference. He'll throw that out. He'll say Nick Shaheen is the Godfather of Greenville. Yeah. Comedy. He's the Godfather. We were honestly kind of starting it at the same time. Okay. So I used to work at this place called Reverb. Reverb. It was down on the West End. And what is that? Uh, it was like a music venue. Okay. A noise music venue. It used to be in uh, fucking uh, kind of further down the West okay. End. And okay. And then we moved it downtown. Okay. And so I would work. It's like right by. It used to be right by Smiley. You know where Smiley's is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah we so go to was, Smiley's all the time. So it was right by Smiley's. Okay. And I used to like help run shows there. Okay. And I was like, I should just fucking do stand up. Yeah. So I wrote a, like a forty-five minute bit, like forty-five minutes worth 45 of jokes. Forty-five minutes. Wait, hold up. So Reverb, did they already do stand up there? They didn't. They didn't. Okay. So, so I would kind of do it in between. Like I would host the show and then maybe make some jokes. So it'd be music acts and you yeah, would go up it'd between be as the host. Music acts and no, and noise music would be there. Okay. Like so, stomp, like uh, any, like just like, like, like uh, trash can, electron. Like, I don't. I never honestly listened to it. <laughs> okay. Because it wasn't my thing. Yeah, I got. But you. I, I would imagine just like. Okay. For like 45 minutes. Wow. Okay. And people really love that shit. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I would, so, so you I wrote was, 45 minutes. What's that? You wrote 45 minutes worth. I wrote stuff. a, I wrote a shit ton of, cause I was like, I'm just do a, do a skit. And there uh -huh. was like, um, so there were like these kids and I was like in my like, uh, you know, early twenties and there uh -huh. was these kids in town that would come to the show and they used okay. to kind of sometimes. They would they would like basically pay the bills because uh -huh. they would bring uh, like tons of people out to see their band. Yeah. So one of the kids wanted to do stand up. So I was like, "You open for me, and we'll do a show, and your friends will come." Yeah. yeah. So this is so you know it's probably it's actually a pretty good number of people that were there. Right. Right. And he did a bit, and he uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he got upset and left it because bombed. it didn't go well. Yeah. It yeah, bombed. Yeah. yeah. And then I went up and bombed for 45 minutes. <laughs> Wait, you stayed up there that long? Yeah, oh. I did all my jokes, yeah. and they were, and nobody laughed uh, at any of them. There was one joke that I had that I said um, I really wanted to like the new Nickelback song, but I couldn't. Um, I couldn't lose my indie cred, so I asked. Uh, I, I wrote Ben Gibbard a message on MySpace and said, "Hey, will you cover that song so I can like it?" Yeah, <laughs> and they laughed at that. Okay, but every other joke bombed for like forty-five minutes. Okay, yeah, so it was, it was like. But honestly, I kind of like that's kind of what I was thriving off of at the beginning of my comedy thing. I was very influenced by Andy Kaufman. Okay. So I really liked to bomb. Yeah. Because I would kind of go up and fuck with the audience. Yeah. So then I met Nick Shaheen was running shows at uh, right across the street from Coffee Underground. Okay. At this bar called, uh, I can't even remember the name of it. And then like the gathering spot. I don't know if that's still there. The G spot. Okay. He was running shows. So we kind of combined, like I would do his shows. Okay. And that was, nobody was doing comedy. And Greenville. at this point it was just book shows that you guys were putting on together. There was no open mics or no nothing. It was basically for... an open, I would do a book show, but he it was basically an open mic he would okay. have. And there was a guy in town named Travis. Uh, I think we're friends, huh? Thubbin? No, not that dude. Okay. He was kind of a, uh, he, he would come out and do it. So it would usually just be me, Shaheen and Travis. Okay. Would do shows yeah. at these bars. Hell and there yeah, was nobody dude. there. And yeah, that that was kind of how it started, and then uh, no expectations. Yep. And then as we did it, more people were like, "Oh, we want to do it." Okay. So Michael Robinette, mm -hmm. Charlie Gray, Tom Emmons, yeah, so yeah, we uh, Tom. Jason Farr. Okay. And there's another one that I can't think of who it was. They started. They, um, I won't say who. One of the people didn't like me on the no expectations thing. Okay. So he didn't allow me to be part of it. Okay. But they started their no no expectations. Oh, Chris Weathers was in no expectations. Okay. So they, he's like, you can't be a part of it. But so, I was also at the time I was banned from Coffee Underground. Wait, what? What happened? I um, I did a music show there. Uh huh. And uh, I was saying over and over holy matrimony is fucking phony unless you do it for the money love is money god is love or something <laughs> and there was a woman it was not even anything 
<laughs> and there was a woman who was running sound who I guess I was offending her. I don't okay. know. And she started beating on the coffee thing in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought she was honestly, honest to God, I wasn't being a dick. I thought she was like enjoying it. Yeah, you thought she was laughing. like, ah, like yeah. yeah, like to the music. So I kind of yeah. amped it up and then she okay. ripped me up on stage and there was this whole thing and Damn. then she like banned me. I don't remember. There could have been other things, but basically it was like from performing, I got banned. Yeah. And then, so I think Michael, uh, who I love dearly, he's a great guy. Uh, mm -hmm. He lives in Vermont now with his awesome wife, Alexa. And um, he let, he, he talked to the owner and then got me back in there. Okay. So then we started doing the no, uh, the comedy every week okay. there at the Coffee Underground. Dude, that's awesome. And it was awesome. That yeah. was a really fun time. It was like, it was like when, you know, really new to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris Weathers is one of the funniest comedians I've ever met. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he still does it anymore. Shout out to Chris Weathers. But, yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome, dude. What, I wanted to like go back. Like something you just said like stuck out because uh, you like Andy Kaufman. And you said you liked bombing. Yeah. That is like uh, I've heard that from some people. Um, like I've heard Louis C.K. say something similar. It's like you can get to a place where you, you don't mind it. You kind of enjoy. Well, I kind of started what to you not get laughs. Right. Like I once I started to get laughs, I would then tell a joke that would make people not like me. Yeah. Why? What do you think this is about you? What do you think? Like I think it was I mean, I think on some level, I mean, there's a deeper thing of like uh maybe being outcasted my life yeah. or being like the black sheep and kind of embracing that. Yeah. So and as soon as people started to accept you that's through when, laughter, you're like, ah, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, this I'm doesn't more, feel right. I gotta I'm more get out comfortable. Of that. I also hated uh I also thought most stand up comedy was shitty. Yeah, and I also hated the like the late night kind of like sure like the 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 jokey joke the things. jokey joke hacky like, hacky stuff. So yeah. I was like, I you felt like you were verging into hack as soon as you as soon as I got a well. laugh, I'm yeah. like I'm a hack. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta fuck this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a lot of like anti humor. Uh huh. Uh, like I remember I had a bit that I would go. Um, I know, I know, you guys are uh, just here to see me because of my. Uh, Martin Lawrence video on uh, YouTube that has a million copies <laughs> or a million hits or a million views. There's no Martin Lawrence. Video. Yeah, there. Well, and so so then I would go uh, and then I would go and tell a joke and I'd be like, "Are you serious? I'm not. I'm not going to tell the story." <laughs> and then they, and I would do like half of a joke and I was like, "I'm seriously not. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. It's not going to happen." So I would just build yeah. and build and build until then eventually they would want to hear the story. Right. Is so there a story? Are, there, are, so is the, there a Martin Lawrence video? Well, the story would be me and Martin Lawrence were um, driving down Hollywood Boulevard. And um, he said, hey, man, I really want to go kayaking. Uh -huh. And I said, okay, man. And he said, I want to go and do it now. Uh -huh. So then me and Martin Lawrence went kayaking down Hollywood Boulevard. It's a fic fictional story. Right, right. But it's not a good story. Right. So it's building, 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 building to always nothing. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. they're like... Oh, this is gonna. There's a payoff here. There's, and the, no, and there's payoff. no payoff. Yeah, yeah. Or like I would do. Uh, I know. I, you know how they tell you in comedy clubs to you, the first thing you say is I look like something. Yeah. So I'd be like, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I look like uh, Andy Warhol uh, had sex with a Tyrannosaurus Rex, <laughs> and that's not what I'm looking like. So they. So in their minds. Yeah. They would they would expect laughter. Yeah. So then they would be like, "Oh, he's doing the thing that makes us laugh." Yeah. And then they wouldn't get it. How long does it take him to pick up on what you're doing and then actually start to laugh at the inside? I think it's yeah. maybe like one person a show would come up to me and be like, "Dude, I got what you did." It was awesome. <laughs> but everybody else hated it. And yeah. then people wouldn't book me because yeah. I would ruin shows. Right. Because th there would be like laughter, laughter, and then I would get up and yeah. just do whatever I wanted. I think that's a great service to like ruin shows. I, I, I enjoyed it. To just completely go off the reservation and unexpected. That's fucking great. And that's what I, I liked. I love that shit. I, yeah, that's what I liked it, but then people wouldn't book me, and they, so then I had to like start writing jokes. Oh, okay. Okay. And then I started so having to be funny. So eventually you got over the desire to only do against the grain stuff to like... Yeah produce something that's worked reliably yeah how'd you get over that i wanted to do shows and people wouldn't let me you wanted to do shows okay yeah. no well i i asked and i actually uh, a friend of mine minori hein shout out but i love her a lot she basically um she's a comedian in atlanta now she's like told me 
Yeah. It's like you, you ruin shows. She was just <laughs> blunt with me. And yeah. I respond really well to people who are just very honest. Yeah, for sure. And, and not like, you know, without any charge in their voice. Yeah. She's just like, you know, you, you ruin shows. I like you, but I, she had a show actually in Asheville and I was like, uh-huh. Oh, let me headline. She's like, no, yeah, you ruin shows. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, Oh, Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. then I was like, huh, I got this choice. I can either keep ruining shows and not being able to do comedy. Right. Or I can try to write jokes and see if I can do shows. Yeah. Or write actual jokes and have like a set. Okay. And and try to do good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I asked selfishly because that's... No, uh, I, I appreciate I, it. I brought it up be, uh, with other people too, but I have this... Uh, I, I, I like to do book shows when I'm asked. Um and I'm only two years in, so it doesn't. It's not like all the time, but uh, I actually get more anxiety for doing book shows because it's going back to the the same kind of material. Yeah. And I also didn't start doing stand up to like. It sounds weird, but to get booked necessarily. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's more yeah. of like what I get out of it and being authentic, which totally. is like feel same. more so when I'm doing newer material and when I'm just fucking around. Same. So very that's, similar thing. That's right. how I felt. It felt very, I didn't like to ha- do the same jokes over and over. Right. So like my thing about getting over that to where like, okay, I want to do book shows. Like that was even a leap in my own head. Like, do I want to do book shows to where it starts to feel like other parts of my life, like a job? Yeah. And I never, I like, I'm, st- I'm still like, I'm in the process of like getting over that now. And man, we more. connect on that. Cause Fuck that was, yeah, that dude. was my thing. It's like people took comedy so fucking seriously. Yeah. It's like it's comedy. Yeah. And then, you know, I remember like we we'd like go to like Charlotte or Atlanta and be like like the other comedians would be like, Justin, man, you can't pull that shit in Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte, you gotta have to be like, fucking material. watch me, dude. And then I get into Charlotte and they're just a bunch of fucking idiots like there are in Greenville. Right. right and right. nobody's any good. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, not, yeah. not that yeah. people are idiots, but yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. nobody that's yeah. like, oh, no, this no, guy's it's, amazing. It's completely fair. Yeah. For sure. And I and, and so it was like, oh, these people are just as dumb as these people. Like, why? Yeah. Why? What am I supposed to, you know? Yeah. There was all this level of like, trying to impress these people and yeah. it's like it's comedy that's kind of the i don't know and 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 i'm kind of an alien in that w- way that's just and like andy kaufman was a huge influence on me right like i thought he was hilarious like right. just kind of like confusing people yeah. because if we take it a little deeper it's that that was like how i felt inside my whole life growing up Wait, i felt, you felt confused i felt very confused by this reality sure and in kind of the way it was going so my revenge would be to fuck with people yeah so growing up i my favorite one of my favorite things to do was like fucking ruin people's days yeah and like kind of funny ways to yeah. me yeah and what yeah. would you do to ruin people's days i mean just you know we i mean just like i mean i think it started in um and it's gonna make me sound like a sociopath I feel like and I can even go even deeper than that. I can remember like I felt like and it's come this has to do with like mom wounds. So uh-huh. I felt like my mom cared more about society and fitting in than she did about me. Okay. So like I remember in sixth grade I had uh, I had made like all B's on a progress report and I was like uh-huh. super happy about it because I was yeah. like, wow, that's great. Yeah. And she's like, what? Not one A. And I, and I kind of felt like how old were you again? I was like 11. And I was kind of like stuck with you. I was like, man, fuck this. Like, yeah. I can't, I yeah. can't reach this shit. It was too much pressure. Yeah. So then I remember like kind of just being a, like kind of a, like taking it out on the world. Yeah. So like I would uh, open up kids lockers and like rip their books to shreds, <laughs> like sociopathic <laughs> shit. Like, um, wow. I remember like taking it back in the day when they had encyclopedias, uh-huh. I would like throw encyclopedias out the window. Yeah. And like, I would, um, I remember like they're like, I remember there was this girl that would always take her shoes off. Just really weird shit. Yeah. I stole one of her shoes and like yeah. threw it outside. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, she's crying and the class is like, yeah. where's my shoe? And then yeah. like the, the, the principal comes or the assistant principal comes in and is like, you guys cannot leave until the person fesses up about <laughs> who stole her shoes. And I just sat there like, Hell yeah. <laughs> and he's like yelling. And she's just like, who would steal somebody's shoes? Who would do yeah, this? Yeah, you're like a low level. And terrorist. I was like, this, like a- this sociopath would, in my mind. And that, looking back, as I've done a lot of inner work, that came from, and I'm sorry to all those people that I did that to. Right. Um, but it came from like feeling like society mattered. 
Yeah. Like this fake importance on this thing that was yeah. more important than actually like loving and being caring about people yeah. and listening to people. Yeah. It was so much about like, you do what I want you to do. Yeah. And if you don't, I don't like you. Yeah. Or if you don't, you're not good unless you do the rules. Yeah. And that kind of conditional yeah. uh, love was triggering for me as a kid. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to uh, rebel against it and I'm just going to be a fuck up. And then I ended up graduating with like a 1.2 GPA in the summer. In high school? In high school. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just never did, I never did homework. I never did work. Wow. Yeah. It was so that, that ran deep. That, that torpedo, that went all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it did go deep. And it still comes out in comedy. I mean, it sounds like the exact same idea of like prov- yeah. proving the meaninglessness of the uh, the thing. Yeah. Or, or not meaninglessness, but like. Yeah, kind of. It's not that important, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to demonstrate to you. Yeah, that yeah that came out in comedy, and it, it's yeah it was a very like sort of you know immature, rebellious kind of attitude that I had that I like uh, brought to to my life. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So like when you were uh, told like you know look you're ruining shows, and then you started to like piece together you know actual material and sets. I mean that sounds like you know uh maturing in comedy yeah, on some of. level yeah you could say it is immaturing or maturing yeah, or immature or mature w- whichever way you want to go with it but yeah i started i remember i um because because the bits you have to do don't have to like they're not hack like well i wrote a bunch of hack shit oh you did write a bunch of hack shit yeah at I mean, first at first like, it was, to well, be it was like, like well not I, even I, not even to be like that but i remember i, I won like. a comedy competition and uh like an amateur comedy competition at the comedy zone in charlotte uh-huh and that did feel really good i was like wow yeah. And it was like jokes like uh, played by the rules, you know, uh, people ask, it was just making fun of myself. People yeah. ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up. I'd always say a failure. <laughs> feels pretty good to make your dreams come true. Yeah. Just yeah. like shit like that. Yeah. You know? And people sure. liked that. Yeah. People liked it when I would just make fun of myself. Yeah. And then I was like, that kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just me putting myself down. Yeah. And, and put, putting like negative energy onto myself for no reason. Yeah. I can, I can find a better way. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. The one bit that I saw you do in Asheville and I don't want to burn stuff. Yeah. For you, you, can, you was, can say it. I don't care. Well, it was, it was the bit about like what you're taught in school. Yeah. And how stupid it was. Like the, the capital of a state and then you listed the state cat and it wasn't even the right one. Like potato is the capital of Idaho. He's like, dude, yeah. why am I alive? Like, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. when you said that, why am I alive? Punchline. I'd laughed really loud. Awesome. Uh, I have an obnoxious laugh. You know, if you heard it, that was a, uh, that's a great laugh. The orange peel, the, the, the pulp thing, room, the pulp room, it was yeah. the room underneath the orange. Peel, yeah. Which is a fun room. But uh, like jokes like that, dude, like I, you know, those are awesome. And, uh, you know yeah like, yeah like, like material like that like i would love to hear more than once just because i feel like it's pretty true and like um i f- i felt like that was something that actually was like pretty authentic to you and everything so yeah then that and that's where i went ahead and get better at um to like be able to say that stuff because i felt like for a while i could be funny with jokes mm-hmm. or i would just rant about shit so yeah. I could get like these jokey jokes that would work, mm-hmm. or then I would just go back out and like rant, yeah. and people were like, oh, that was really good, meaning like made them feel something. Yeah, but it wasn't the rant, funny. The, the rant stuff. Yeah, the rants yeah. wouldn't like. There was no. At least I didn't have enough humor in them. Yeah. So now I'm like learning how to rant with structure. Rant with structure and humor. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Is that how you write now? Basically, is that where you go to more? Do you do jokey jokes too? I think I you, you have some joke. Yeah. Yeah. I do jokey jokes too. I, I kind of, I try to start like that first joke before I go into that uh-huh. is a jokey joke. Okay. It's like, um, uh, I ran into my high school, uh, my high school geometry teacher recently. Yeah. And I was like, Hey man, how's everything going? He's like, you know, not good, man. I got a lot of problems. I'm like, <laughs> Oh really? What's wrong? He's like, well, you know, my, uh, this girl accused me, a student accused me of sleeping with her, which I didn't do. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Uh, lost my house. My yeah. wife left me. Yeah. You know? Well, my reputation scarred, you know, it's real rough, man. I got a lot of problems. And I'm like, uh, why don't you do what you told us to do when you had problems? Uh, a squared plus B squared <laughs> equals C squared. Right, right. You know, which is a joke about how it's a pun on problems and, and, and yeah. how meaningless the shit they taught us yeah, was exactly. like real. That's real shit. Yeah. You know, sure. on some level, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just throwing it back at him and not, but <laughs> that's like how, like, you know, there's no class on how to deal with 
not right. that people not that a lot of people have that happen to them but right. you know there's there's these problems you know in yeah. life you know relationships wife you know yeah. and then they just kind of teach you like shit that doesn't really help you yeah you know yeah of course yeah yeah and then dude why am i alive <laughs> so then that goes into that joke about how like yeah yeah because that i mean that is a thing they don't really you know they they and the teacher doesn't know why you're alive right because she doesn't yeah, know yeah, why yeah, she's alive yeah no but yeah so she hates you for it, the teachers hated me for questioning them that yeah like i remember the spanish teacher but you actually me. questioned your teachers like that yeah that wasn't just, okay i remember i there's a spanish teacher i had and i would just be like what's the like i this is i was such a man i was i was such an asshole but i didn't understand consciously why you would want to be a spanish teacher this is really <laughs> fucked up but i didn't understand it so i would try to have these deep conversations with her of like why do you do this <laughs> like why why don't you do something else and she hated me which yeah. i understand now because i was like 14 she, wanted, she really wanted to do something else probably Pro maybe and she, she would be mad if she actually was we never got the that far yeah, yeah, yeah. I and uh, why should, are you doing this? Yeah, I'd be like, why do you? Why are you here? Like, what makes you I wake up? I wonder in the if that would have like, if she would have like hooked up with you or something. If she would have like fallen in love with you because you understood her, <laughs> you know? Like, I definitely dude, didn't. I didn't. In black. Okay, like, I didn't. Do you want to hang out after school? Let's just say I didn't bring that kind of energy. <laughs> Mine was like very kind of aggressive, honestly. Like, oh, okay. and she hated me yeah. and she failed me. She failed. You. She failed me. In the same year, I I was cutting myself and I went deaf in my left ear. Oh fuck! And uh, my mom got me out of the grade, uh, out of the where I didn't have to take. This is insane. How my mom was. She got me out of ever having to take a foreign language because she said like, because I'm half deaf. Yeah. That I couldn't understand it, which yeah, is complete you bullshit. One for I, English. And yeah. If I can handle yeah. anything else. Yeah. It's like my left ear. Yeah. 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 So she got me out of it. So it was avoided off my record. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I okay. still got an F. <laughs> but it was just the lady just fucking, she hated me, which I understand. Yeah. And I had a lot of teachers that just really hated me. Yeah. Because I was like such an asshole yeah. to them. And and it wasn't their fault, but it was more like of the system of like. Well, it was probably shocking because very few kids would actually speak out in that way. Yeah. And then like hit something on the nose, like their chosen profession. I'm like, dude, why are you? But I like, literally, I could. I, fucker, we're all miserable. Stop telling us about how miserable we are. We all. Yeah. 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 And it was just me. I just couldn't. I couldn't. I, I could. I don't know. Maybe I had some kind of disorder or something yeah. of like not being able. To, I don't know. I just couldn't. Under, I couldn't fathom. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why would you want to be? No, you just suck. You're just an insightful kid. It sounds like I don't insightful, know. but also really stupid. Which well, is yeah. Kind of a beautiful, well, you just didn't understand like really basic things. I didn't understand like really basic. But you got things. the fun part right you got the important yeah part, we get right? the fun part right but, yeah. I would be, but it was very mean to yeah. like i remember there was this one teacher there that was like a really great teacher and um i'd kind of learned how um sort of like my dad would kind of yell to get his way uh-huh like he'd like overpower my mom yeah so i was like damn that's brilliant you know? <laughs> so i would not do work and then i would yeah. scream at my teachers <laughs> i would be like I, I are you see I turned that in. Yeah. They'd be like, you know, and I'd start yelling at them and Did shit. you turn it in? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I wouldn't do any work and I would yell at them and I'd be like, You must have lost it. Right. Why did you lose just it? You gaslighting your teacher. I would just gaslight the hell out of them. Yeah. And I remember this one and this teacher was like so great. Like I remember she would like dress up as other characters. Uh huh. And then when she'd dress up as other characters, I'd like be a like, lit teacher dressed She was up actually a science teacher. Science, okay. And she'd I'd be like, uh, I don't want to say her name, so let's call her Mrs. Anderson. Okay. And uh uh, she'd be like, uh, you know, um, she was a great teacher, but she would be like, she'd, de she'd dress up as like Dr. Shivago or some shit. Huh? And then uh, I would come in and uh, I'd be like, thank God Miss Anderson isn't here. <laughs> you know she's an alcoholic, right? She's drunk all the time. <laughs> and I would just talk endless ones of shit about her, which is really mean. In front of the whole class? Yeah, well, I would say it to her. Like, I'd oh. be like, you know, God. Thank God. I hope she doesn't come back <laughs> and just really fuck with her. And one day she took me out of class and she's like, Justin, I've never told this to a student before, but I hate you. <laughs> like when you come into the room, I just get really uncomfortable and you just make me so anxious and I just hate teaching you. Oh my God. And, uh, she was very sweet in how she said it. She was very like kind of kind. <laughs> and, I, and I just remember I was like, I turned that in. That's you. Yeah. <laughs>
but yeah. it was that's kind of how that that's where i uh yeah that's kind of how like i just didn't like school yeah and that's how i dealt with it yeah by being an asshole huh i yeah. love it and then that kind of you know that fueled the comedy yeah later. there should be more of that probably yeah it's a little bit you know everybody's marching in line and not really thinking for themselves much I know I didn't really. Yeah. I anytime I like approached it in, in like an art class or like it would be great. Or like I remember I had a humanities class in high school and that was one I really loved because it was about philosophy and we got to do like an art project as our final and I oh, fell awesome. in love with that. Yeah. But I was always hedging way harder in ninety percent of the other areas. So yeah. like athlete gotta do that. Gotta yeah. Get straight A's, gotta do all that. But I, I wasn't always brave. So, I, yeah, I feel like, I don't well, know. You're, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's shitty to be like, well, that's rude, cool. you got, but it's fucking cool. But you got to experience, like, you know, uh, that kind of structure of, like, I would have, like, I didn't make my high school basketball team. You know, maybe if I would have made my team, even though I, I was, I feel like I was the best three point shooter in the. Yeah. yeah. That was before people just. You know, threw threw up threes all the time. Yeah, and no, I, I got a lot of side benefit of just yeah. putting my head down and grinding because totally. I still deep down had some like a little bit of like you know creative stuff that I got. But yeah, you get good habits and you. Good yeah, things. I didn't have good habits. That's yeah. something I'm still working on. Yeah, you might have to use the restroom real quick. No, go ahead. Yeah, we're good. So yeah, I think we all kind of come to the same conclusions in our own ways, which is kind of what makes life beautiful. Yeah. Some people never come to the same conclusions, but I think like, you think eventually there's a common realization that kind of the conformist ideas is, is like, it ends up leaving you kind of wanting more. Yeah. I, I think, I, it, I feel like that's how I felt. If I had to, you know. Yeah. And that's awesome that you went for more. Cause I think a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, honestly, and you know, obviously I'm speaking for people, but I think, you know, some people like, you know, they're dead. They're on their die deathbed and they're like, yeah. oh, I wish I would have done something different or I wish I yeah. would have been this, you know, because, you know, there is a, we are kind of like brainwashed uh -huh. and conditioned to be certain ways. Yeah. And that, and that, in my opinion, is why our society is so, that's an aspect of why our society is so disconnected and fucked up from self. Yeah. Because they don't really, uh, we don't really teach that. Right. We teach, listen to other people. We don't mm -hmm. teach no self. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, Which of course, is, it's people. practical on some level, I feel like. Yeah. But like it, it's, it leaves a lot to be like desired it, later. Exactly. It is very practical when you're a kid. Mm hmm. Um, Cause you probably couldn't handle self discovery as a, as a kid. Yeah. Entirely, I think it's so, but it could be nurtured in some and way. Yeah. It could be in, nurtured in and cultivated. Right. Like when they're express when they're like building a sandcastle or some shit or like doing something just that they love to do. Totally. Encouraging that type of stuff. Yeah. But, and I think that in under and helping people, helping kids understand how they're feeling and their emotions and all the sorts of stuff and letting them kind of come to their own conclusions. Yeah. Without telling them this is who you and I, I think life's getting a lot better in that in that aspect mm -hmm. from like when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh but instead of just telling people this is who you are, this is what you do. Yeah. You know, and you know, I remember my dad would always yell at me and be like I wasn't a good student, man, but I could at least go down there and shut up and do what I was told. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what he would that say. That kind of, like, behavior, and that leads to, you know, yeah, a lot, to, like you said, to be desired later. Yeah. And a lot of confusion when, like, you know, you are maybe retired from your job or something. Yeah. It's like, what do I do now? Yeah, for sure. I, like, I saw a video I? online. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about, like, people on their deathbed and what the... what what they say like what they tend to like regret and typically the unless i mean i guess unless you like were incarcerated for murder and in prison your whole life like yeah. you don't regret doing certain things you regret the things you don't do yeah it's more common totally so people kind of playing it safe yeah and i uh, like for, for example in my own personal life recently my fiance broke up with me oh fuck, so dude, that I'm was sorry. like a really but it was actually a really beautiful sort of deathbed experience where like i realized like whoa there was some things in my life that i was like kind of maybe putting too much importance into um, yeah, like that, what? like just like maybe sort of like angers or mm -hmm. uh, issues of things and maybe like people not feeling like people didn't appreciate me enough or didn't give what I, you know, just things like these little issues that I had within myself mm -hmm. and with her and with, mm -hmm. you know, other people in, in my life and I, all that shit like, uh, 
well, initially she wanted to open the relationship. And uh-huh. I was like, yeah, cool. And But when she went in, but I was like, damn, she might actually break the fuck up with me here. Right. So right. that's when that started to like, wow, I've made, I've, I should never ever get upset about anything. And I should just live as in, in love and bliss as much as I can. That's the takeaway you had. That was the takeaway. It's kind of like still a death bad experience. Yeah. yeah still yeah. doing my best to live in that energy. Yeah. Like I have, you know, I've gotten angry since we've broken up. I've gotten angry a couple times and that hasn't gone well. Yeah. But I've done a really great job of managing to stay in my heart with it. Yeah. So I've been crying a lot okay. at times. Yeah. But it's been, uh, it's been really beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and it Cause keeps, you're actually feeling the I'm shit. I'm feeling it versus yeah. like just, you know, why don't you like me or why yeah. are we, you know, and it, yeah. it's been actually really awesome. So it's been, that's kind of how, kinda how I, that? uh, I, I don't know. When, <clears throat> she, in August was when she was like, Hey, let's open the relationship. This, and then just a month ago. Yeah. Damn dude. Are and you then, okay? uh, I think maybe uh, this month, I think we broke up. I don't Shit, remember the dude. Continual break. Sorry, up. bro. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's, it's honestly kind of a, a double, like a you know great blessing and a curse uh, yeah yeah yeah. like the blessing is really like feeling you know i think relationships can kind of get stagnant at times and i'm kind of a people up until this time and hopefully i won't do it again i'm a big people pleaser yeah yeah, relationships and they get they get more going on so when 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 stuff goes bad you try to like people please yeah i'm very people pleaser okay yeah so like there were maybe aspects of things that I didn't really like stand up for myself in, or yeah. maybe didn't really look deeper into how I was feeling mm-hmm. and how, you know, she was feeling. Cause I was like, Oh, well, we're engaged. We're going to get married. It's all going to work itself out. Right. So I had this people please pleaser nature. Right. And that, that kind of bit me in the ass. But you're not actually rooting out the stuff. You're just, yeah. Yeah. Totally. totally. And and that's and I could see how that led to things that didn't really uh yeah. go well. So that was really awesome. And then, you know, I mean it it definitely sucks on a level of like, you know, that was the that was my future or right. I thought it was. We were gonna get married yeah. and have kids. And yeah. um but at the same time it's 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 opened up this whole other kind of uh because I do feel like and not this isn't like anything uh I, I felt I felt like kind of this deeper maybe anxiety in the relationship yeah and i do kind of feel like that's gone out of my life yeah because you know like seeing yourself through someone else's eyes and yeah you know like having to be like this person for them and all. yeah I mean, it doesn't have to be that way but sometimes it, the yeah it could be like productive yeah sometimes you kind of the- like um default state into that yeah and i feel like this year i kind of did that mm-hmm. and uh at times and but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's also like this really beautiful heart centered thing that's happening to me. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. It's cool to like have that perspective. I feel like when life like just totally just wrecks you like with something unexpected, that's when like, I don't know. That's why like, that's why I'm doing comedy to begin with. And I've, I've told this before, but like, and it wasn't it wasn't like a broken engagement it wasn't nearly but in my own head it was a big deal yeah it was uh i'll tell you just real quick but uh this was in 2020 right before covid i was interviewing for a marketing position back in my hometown yeah or like closer to family and you know i was single and i was like dude what the fuck am i doing like i was stressed out about work and i was like you know i've always wanted to do something a little more creative marketing kind of fits that a little bit and I was so qualified for the job and there were only like two candidates interviewing and there were two openings. I was like, or maybe there were three candidates and two openings. And I yeah. was like, dude, if I don't get like, I, like I'm going to get this for sure. Totally. I was like, come off the best year of my career. I was like, dude, this is going to work. This is going to work out. And then they passed on me Yeah. and they like, didn't like something about what they saw or how I portrayed myself. I was maybe all over the place. And when I got that call, I remember I was like standing in this room and I didn't have any furniture in the room yet because I wasn't committed to living in Greenville yet. Yeah. I was like, I was, it was just like nothing. It was just hardwood floors. And I was staring outside of that building and I like broke down in tears because I was like, that was my future. I thought like yeah. going back to West Michigan, totally. I'm going to get my shit together. I'm going to stop partying. I'm going to meet yeah. a nice girl. I'm going to get a nice little house in the suburbs. And like, that makes sense to me. Like I can actually wrap my head around that. And when they rejected me, I was like, fuck my, there's something off about how I'm being perceived in this company. My brand is shit for all I know. Um, I'm a piece of shit. I am just going to sell here and God knows what's going to, and then COVID hit 
and then you know through that i started doing stand-up but and there was a bunch of other shit there too but yeah no. i'm so happy though that was like the best thing that ever happened totally yeah just not getting that job because like all i cared about was my identity in the eyes of this fucking company which i love my company i'm still with them and they're great but now i can like actually love love it for real for like you know and appreciate it as totally. opposed to like clinging to it for everything 100 percent. i think there was an aspect similar energy that i that i had in our relationship deeper down yeah that it, yeah that, that like i just thought we were going to be together forever yeah and i was like there's no way we're going to break up right you know and right. um but but at the same time there is that freedom of like wow like honestly i really enjoy getting broken up with on some level because as a as a you know as a male in the you know when i was growing up i wasn't taught to like that it was okay to cry yeah so like i didn't i know i didn't cry from like 12 to like 20 something wow cuz i just i i just cut that off yeah a lot so of cry opportunities getting that, broken up with was like things actually make me cry yeah and it like makes me like feel into those feelings for some reason yeah so it's like it's really great it's like really healing for me yeah so uh for sure so i think that it's it's been great and on that level mm-hmm. that's cool man yeah so life coach poat comedian what yeah. is your instagram handle if that's life coach poet comedian I that's think. it yeah. okay got it dude so tell me about life coaching because like you like I don't know a lot about that you've been doing. I know like based on your Instagram, you, you put stuff out and everything. How long have you been doing life coaching and like, what's uh, probably the, probably about like six years I've been doing, uh, I, I started doing as a, uh, I was doing intuitive readings. So I was kind of like a psychic for a while. Oh shit. Yeah. I, uh, I started, do you believe I, in psych psychic stuff? Oh, 100%. Oh, you do? I think everyone's psychic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when Explain I was, Explain that to me. Well, so, or, or you know, yeah, I'll tell you this story. So when I was like 21, 22, I was living in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. And a friend of mine, was like, I met this dude at a poetry reading. Uh -huh. And he's like, uh, yo, man, I'm psychic. And I was like, oh, cool. And I didn't care. Yeah. And um, he, he started <laughs> giving like psychic. readings. He just comes up to you. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he started giving readings to like people in my building and people like knock on the door like, yo, where's your friend at? You know? Yeah. And uh, so one day he was giving me a reading and I was, I'd, I'd been eating a lot of mushrooms and acid. Right. So right. I was already, I was very tripped out. Yeah. And I had started reading a lot of like spiritual books and shit. Yeah. And uh, he was like, yo, man, you're psychic, too. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, I was like, what do I do? He's like, just trust your intuition. Okay. So I just started trusting it. So then we would go into Columbia and, and we would go to these like spiritual stores and he would give psychic readings and I would give psychic readings to people. So and then actually I got a job in Greenville at this place called Kima Healing Art Center that used to be on... Um, uh, I forget street names. Now. Okay, it's no, honestly cool. on the same street as uh, um, Smiley's. Smiley's. You just keep going. To Augusta. A Augusta. It's Road. on Augusta. Okay. So it was on Augusta. I worked there for a couple years doing intuitive readings and also like kind of helping. So out intuitive with the shop. readings is that different than like what I'm thinking of when I think of a psychic reading? Like you're looking at a palm or something. So I would. So basically, people would come. So what I would. This is how I do it. I don't know how other people do it. Okay. So this is what I would do. I would feel like I. I feel like I had a. And I still do. I have a really great understanding that every. Everybody is divine love energy consciousness whatever you want to call it okay like they're, they're in their fullness they are the, the they are amazing and full and whole yeah. and there's aspects of self that think that, that we're not okay right and that, that sort of society conditions us so, to, so we think we're to bad. which that divine spark is muted and yeah so people. i feel like i can i i would this is how i used to do psychic readings so do i would feel into people's energies because people would be like, read me psychically, whatever. And I would mm -hmm. feel into people's energies and I would feel the, 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 the amazing power of them. And I would say something very positive and they'd be like, yes. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, and then I would feel the vibrational difference where I didn't feel that energy. Right. So I would feel the very elevated emotions mm -hmm. that I felt from them. And then I would feel maybe the lower vibrations. Okay. And then from there, I would bridge that gap. Can I, can I say an example and yeah, see if of it's course. accurate of what you were doing? Like, so hypothetically, if a person was talking about something they loved and they were passionate about, like that's a different kind of energy if somebody's expressing that versus like if they're describing their nine to five and saying yeah i like it like this 100 this, this is that right and you can tell because like, i can i feel like i can kind of tell that difference to somebody like 
if somebody's talking about something they really care about, they light up. Totally. They're they're absolutely like a, almost a different person. Versus, yes. And typically it's about a job. That's what I think of. Like if somebody like, do you love your job? Yeah, I like. And like, no, you don't actually. Yeah. Um, and then it'll be like, oh, but I love to do this. So yeah. that's a great example of like something that maybe they feel really happy about themselves. They're really good at something. And then there's a difference in how they feel about like their childhood or some other aspect of self. Right. So what I would feel into and I would kind of then from there, I would say, Hey, well, I'm feeling this part of you and there's this kind of thing. And I would just trust my intuition Yeah. and sure. I would be, and I would just give, you know, I would do it. Uh, I did it. I, I would do spiritual festivals. Right. Uh, there was a woman in town that has now passed away. Uh, she was an awesome woman. Mm-hmm. I would do her festival and she had them in uh, Columbia and Charleston and, and Greenville. And I would just do kind of spirit, like those kinds of things. And um, yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it, and then, but then I got to the point where I noticed when I would do the festivals and other things where people would be like, when am I going to, like, for example, when am I going to meet my soulmate? And I would be like, I don't know. When are you? And then they would get mad or they wouldn't like that. Well, yeah, because that you can't predict that. Well, I mean, in, on, a, on a level, you can you can actually feel into the energy of how they're feeling about that. And yeah. when will that happen from that stream of consciousness? Okay. So, so they're, but they're it, way far away from where they need to be to meet their soulmate. It'll be a longer time until that. Totally. To and, and the thing about yeah. psychic readings in tarot and all that stuff, and this is just my perspective. I'm not saying I'm 100% right. But from my perspective, it's like if I'm in a really great state, let's say you're a psychic reader yeah, and I'm in a really great state, I'm going to get a completely different reading if I come to you and I'm kind of depressed, yeah. right? Because you're going to feel a whole different energy in me. Yeah. And you're going to, and you're going to, you're going to feel into those energies. Right. And those energies are going to conduct where you go with the reading. Right. Right. As opposed to tarot cards where it's just objectively, this is what Well, the even cards. tarot cards is the same thing because you're picking from their, their, you're picking from your energy. Okay. And you, and that's how you, so you would pick different cards if you were in a different energy. Oh, I gotcha. I so gotcha. both things are the same thing. Okay. Well, that to me, like, honestly, I mean, if you would ask me like 10, 20 years ago, like about psychic, I would be like, okay, that's, you know, fake, whatever. Like I wouldn't buy into it, but like the way you're describing it, um, I can definitely understand like almost a bridge between like the life coaching stuff. Well, yeah. So that led purely, to asking, wanting people to, because that's what I want for myself is embodied in this energy versus like, oh, I'm in this energy when I go get a psychic reading or, you know, like when I used to work at the, uh, uh, the Kima Healing Arts Center, mm-hmm. there was like a massage therapist that, there where they would kind of talk shit about us and be like, oh, yeah, the people are good during them, but then they go back out there and they do the same shit. Okay. So you guys aren't really doing anything. And I, I liked that. him. I thought other people would get pissed off about him. I was like, all right, that's a good point. Shit. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, they should have some staying power. With the yeah. Room. Yeah. Should, so, should, so should, I can. would, so then I was like, okay, well, life coaching is more about helping, in my opinion, helping people embody that energy okay. of their divinity, of their empowerment, of their love, whatever the pot, the elevated emotions yeah. in living in that yeah. versus like, coming coming in you know and then finding the tools of like what are ways that we can that feel good to my clients that they can keep because you know that they can keep in that energy right like like how do we sustain it how do we sustain it how do we build good habits around around feeling amazing about yourself right really being in love with life because yeah a lot of that isn't just the feeling it's like doing stuff that may feel shitty but it sets you up in the course of your week or day Totally, like finding ways even around doing something that feels shitty. How can we find a way to make it? F- where where's the win win? Where's yeah. the where's like the positive thing in it? Right. Kind of always reframing things mm-hmm. to make things not in a delusional sense, or it's in the context of what it's getting you to. Maybe. Yeah, like totally. A, like a what, goal or it, something. Not in a delusional sense. Uh, where you're like, oh, everything's great, and you're lying to yourself. But like, yeah. a client I remember recently said I really helped him out. Where like I I was giving him affirmations, mm-hmm. and my and my affirmation for him though I said I'm I'm okay, and he's like that really helped me out that week. What was the affirmation? I'm okay. He just, you, 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 I told, told him, him to, to say, say that, that. Himself. I'm okay. because that actually felt true. Yeah. So like, if I'd have been like I'm good, 
he'd have been like, no, I'm not. His mind would have been like, you're not good. You suck. Yeah. And that wouldn't have worked. Right. So just like in his body, I'm okay felt genuine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm all about being genuine with how we feel because like, you know, if like somebody's like, let's say affirmations about money. If I'm like, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. And my body doesn't feel like it. And I look at my bank account and I'm broke. Yeah. My body, you know, I'm going to be like, that's split energy it's not and you're true. not, and you're not going to get anywhere. Right. So you'd have to say like, if some, an affirmation that would be positive would be like, there's money out in the world. Mm hmm. Some people have a lot of money, right. uh, you know, right. Uh, if I had more money, that would be cool. Or I'm grateful for like what I do have. Uh, right I'm now. grateful what I'm at. relative to a third world country. I might be better off than I could be totally like that. Whatever yeah. would make you genuinely feel good. Yeah. It's not about, I, I'm all about genuineness and yeah. versus like telling yourself some bullshit yeah. because that, that energy splits yeah. eventually and for shit sure. doesn't go well for sure. If you're lying to yourself. Yeah. So how how long were you doing the life coaching? When did you bridge off from the psychic stuff to the like, probably about seven years? Seven years. Oh, you said that. Yeah, it's like seven years. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while. You like it? I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's like hell like, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, favorite one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, is just I mean, it's just uh, it's just empowering people, mm -hmm. telling people how amazing they are, speaking really positive things and in, in, into their lives, and just kind of showing them where how how all the negative things they think about themselves are just sort of a false premise from childhood. Like none of it's actually real in the sense it's real. I'm not invalidating that you feel that way, yeah. but it's, it's brought in by, you know, like let's say you were your mom, like let's take for example, <clears throat> you know, my life. So mom, mm -hmm. when I'm, uh, you know, a she kid, not one, a, a not one, a, mm -hmm. that made me feel bad that made me feel like i'm not good enough that made me feel like i'll never be good enough right, right? but really all that's happening is some random woman who mm -hmm. happens to be my mom right is telling me that i need to get an a which right. it does it just doesn't even mean anything right so i'm taking this person's shit on and making it my, make myself mean i'm not good enough and mm -hmm. all sorts of dumb shit that you know ruined that that fucked my life up when really yeah. nothing is actually happening other than this person that I is my yeah. mom. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all these people have all these like beliefs about themselves that are negative, yeah. but they're really just false premises from like when you were a kid that you took yeah. on and you made mean something, but it didn't actually really mean anything. Yeah. And then yeah. you keep seeing it over and over and over. Yeah. You, for like sure. you keep looking through the eyes, like in my, my, my mind, and that was the thing, honestly, in the relationship that really kicked up of like, I felt like some mom stuff with her, like I'm not good enough. Yeah. And when that, when I hit that hit, I was like, oh, that, that's not even a thing. I'm great. Yeah. So it felt like that was a really empowering thing where it's like that I'm not good enough energy yeah. was just cr created from bullshit. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I told you I just started uh, uh, therapy. A couple yeah, that's months awesome. Ago. Yeah, yeah. Looks, yeah I'm, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, but he's spent a lot of time, similar themes of like going back, revisiting, you know, how you were raised in childhood. And I, I don't even want to like be too negative. My parents, my parents were amazing. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of the negative self-esteem stuff that comes up, it's like, you know, you'll have those voices that say, Oh, don't, you know, don't do this. You're not gonna, you know, it's going to sound stupid, whatever it's it, what he kind of explained it as was it's, these were behaviors that were functional at some point. At least your body thought they were because they were protecting you from exposing yourself exactly. to vulnerability. 100%. So he's saying they probably <laughs> were valid at some point, but you kind of want to process them like they're, they're old behaviors that now they're actually hurting you. Totally. Now they're actually a sabotaging you. Yeah. So yeah. Like, it's like a system. Yeah. You use the exact metaphor. So maybe it's, it's part of the same kind of methodology, but he basically said like, think of it as like an error message on your computer that you, you could probably just X out of and update your software and you'd totally. be fine because. Mm -hmm. it, it, and I love that you said that because that's so true. So like all the anxiety and pain that we feel and all that shit, it's all there to protect us. Yeah. You know, on some level, I remember when I was in, uh, I lived in Costa Rica for a little while. I was dating this uh, one woman. It's like 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. um, I started having extreme anxiety attacks. And this, uh, while I was over there, I, I might have, I don't know. I, I could have had whatever happened. I don't remember. So I just started having these really intense anxiety things. Mm -hmm. And the person at the time that I was with, much love to her, 
she was kind of like, you need to fucking stop having this shit. Maybe. Yeah. You know, she's like, you need to quit. What brought him on? Dude? Um, honestly, I think that I, I had had like, um, uh, somebody would say maybe like a uh, Kundalini awakening or I, all I know is that one day I was doing yoga mm-hmm. and, um, at the, uh, at my after work, mm-hmm. I'm doing yoga at the Costa Rica yoga spa and, uh, I go outside and I'm just like in this state of oneness and bliss with everything. And I'm in the jungle and it's great. Right. And then I got to kind of go to, to work. And like, I was also like waiting, ta- like helping out in the yeah. kitchen with the guests. Cause, and, um, so the guests are there and I'm one with everything. And then I kind of look around and I'm like, holy shit, I don't want to be, uh, one with this guy. I fucking hate him. Yeah. I don't want to be one with this person. I hate her. Uh, yeah. And I had this extreme panic attack. Yeah. And uh I just like ran to the shower and was yeah. in the at- shower for an hour like praying, you know. Yeah. And uh, I thought I was going to die. And um That's crazy. Yeah, it was intense. And then, you know, she, you know, I my anxiety triggered her anxiety. Yeah. So no, no disrespect for her, but she was kind of like shut up, right? Yeah. So that made it worse. Yeah. So I feel like I had an anxiety attack for like a yeah. month straight yeah. while I was there. I was just fucking panicking. Yeah. And I couldn't tell her about it, you know. Yeah. So I didn't have any anyway. So when I got back, I started to like interview myself and interview that because they, they didn't stop the anxiety attacks. And one thing, the anxiety, I remember telling me that really changed my, that really got me to transform those anxiety attacks at that point in time was the anxiety was like, I'm just trying to protect you. I'm trying to keep you safe. And I was like, well, you're actually doing a really shitty job of it. So you feel like you found like more of a wholeness state the yoga and everything. Yeah. And then the anxiety was protecting you from getting back into a world that was like really f- bad energy. Like this well, dude, fuck this dude, fuck that dude kind of thing. That's Is actually, that kind re- of the- that's incredibly insightful. I never thought of it that way. Well, I, I don't no, know. You're that. right. Actually. Yeah. That's actually a really insightful. Like I we know. just were in this blissful heaven. I never place, thought about that. Now, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just thought of anxiety being protective. You know, no, that's great. Like we want to stay. You no, know, I never had that realization, but it was that, so that new. Been maybe probably that, like, something. Yes. Cool. It was so awesome, new. It's actually. like we don't want to lose this. So like freak out right now because you're in danger of going back to a bad place. Yeah, maybe my anxiety was trying to protect me from like happiness. Yeah. That's really insightful. I, don't know. I wish I had realized that at the time. <laughs> it was saving me a lot of time. <laughs> but uh, uh but no, yeah. So I but the anxiety was telling me that it, so then it would when it would come up again, I had this like advantage over it where I would be like Yo, bro, we already had this, con- you know, I'd say this to my anxiety, like, yeah. we already had this conversation. Yeah. You already acknowledged that you're just trying to protect me, and I already told you you suck at it. Right, right. So right. you you got to go. Right. And then once it didn't have, it needs me as a host. Right. Like anxiety, depression, all this, it needs you to agree with it. Yeah. Like the negative thought needs you to go, yeah. Yeah. If you're like, no. It needs a host. It I need- like that. Yeah. It's a virus, sort of. It yeah. is. That's a yeah. great way to look at it. It's yeah. a virus. And then if you're, and if you don't give it its power yeah it doesn't have anywhere else to go yeah so that was a huge so i do like that he said that because that is true like in its mind it's kind of like a shitty parent yeah that's trying its best but it just doesn't know what it's doing yeah yeah kind of like kind of like my parents respect to them yeah like my parents kind of freak out about like like you know if i leave my dad's uh in my parents house like Dad would be like, don't hit any kids. Yeah. Like, why the fuck am I going to hit a kid? Yeah. Like, with, the, with my car. Like, it, my parents are really worst case scenario people. Yeah. So they'll just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't eat a, don't eat vegan. You'll become poison. <laughs> yeah. It's like absurdity. Yeah. I, I have a funny story about that though. Oh, yeah? Say, is, you know, this is a funny story. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So my mom, so I went to LA last year. Uh-huh. And she was like, um, I've been reading about how there's uh, heroin on the on the beaches so don't go to the beach yeah okay. so i go to the beach and um i am like digging in the sand having this blissful wonderful experience yeah yeah, yeah. and i get this tar all uh-huh. over my hands and i was like holy shit it's black tar <laughs> and i started having an anxiety attack yeah and luckily my ex my fian my ex fiance was at the time really helped she's like no, I don't, and it was oil or something for the thing. But that's how that mind, because my mom said it, like, yeah, you know, watch yeah, out for the heroin. The and, yeah. I, and I was just like, there's my mom being an idiot. Yeah. But then I got some of my hands and I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. Yeah. I'm going to start tripping out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dude, so that's isn't funny. it funny when you think about parents? I was thinking about this recently about like 
mistakes parents might have made or like but like they only have so much time to get it right and like they're like the the generations like if, if you think they last like if say a person lives 100 years which most don't but there aren't that many generations to trace back to like the beginning of history even yeah totally like 20 generations yeah so like or more but like i mean how how much farther ahead are we now than than we were a few generations ago. Oh. Like I just like how mo- how fucked up were people who raised in the twenties? Oh yeah. Like what kind of like how archaic and dogmatic maybe was the 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 fr- the structure that though they were giving their kids? One hundred percent. So like and it's only recently where we're kind of like breaking through a little bit more. It seems like totally. That's why I love you know I have so much love and compassion for my parents most of the time because you know my mom's mom died when she was uh well you don't know this but no. my mom's mom died when she was four three or four of uh she got hit by a drunk driver oh ran shit. off the road and died okay and then uh my dad's dad left him when he was like three weeks old oh my so gosh. they didn't have any fucking parents so they're like right. you know they're lost in the wilderness uh, right with this shit so yeah yeah but i feel like a lot of this that's that's fucking horrible by the way i didn't mean yeah. to no it's okay over, yeah but... I, don't, I mean i don't i, don't, <laughs> I never knew him yeah <laughs> No, no. Um, it seems like a lot of this, uh, you know, how to properly raise in, raise a kid and then the, like the recognition, like stuff you're talking about, like getting them to like understand what they're feeling and encouraging certain things. Um, that seems to be very new. Totally. Very new. Oh, like, yeah. I don't remember any of this when I was a kid. I don't either. Or like anybody even talking about Neither it. Neither do I. Yeah. Ever. So I guess my question is like how cr- like. I mean, the time we're living in now, like how crazy and how fast is the, is like the speed we're um, understanding things better because of like, I don't know what it is. Maybe oh, it's age of, of information. Internet, yeah. Of internet. Internet was yeah. changed everything. Like, how insane is the time we're living in right now? It's amazing. Just, it is insane. Yeah. I feel like people, we, we almost can't even process it. We can't. It's, it's it, happening so much. It like, is. So fast. I think it's the greatest time to be alive. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely intense and overwhelming, but yeah. there's like. I just like to think about it on a relative basis because of how condensed of a window it is where this is happening relative to all of history. It's totally. Just, it trips me out sometimes. Like it, but putting this back into comedy, like I, I used to have this, or I, maybe I had a bit or I was, it didn't really go well, but I was like talking about how like, <laughs> you know, when I was raised in like, you know, I was growing up in like the nineties, like, um, you know, there was only like one or two funny people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there would be like the funny class clown. And mm-hmm. I remember I would try to be the funny class clown and then, yeah. uh, um, if there was somebody better than me, I would chill out and let him yeah. run the show. But yeah. now, like, so many people are funny. Like, TikTok, yeah. everybody's funny. Yeah. You know, there would be, like... And people were funny back then, but they didn't... Uh, they did that there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of openness yeah to be to be fun and how ha- you know that people were really like repressed yeah there wasn't a vehicle for it or anything yeah so every so it's like you know there would be like oh that's the guy in our, that's the guy that's the funny guy in our school yeah or, the one guy I, yeah. yeah yeah no that is cool and now everybody can kind of participate in it yeah and everybody everybody has more emotional more emotional like expression now mm-hmm. than ever yeah yeah. What do you think about the shitty parts of the age of information? Like, you know, we talk about like, there's a lot of shitty stuff on TikTok. There's a lot of like stuff where like people are, you know, more like approval seeking likes all about social media and all that kind of stuff. I mean, does that bother you or do you think it's, uh, it's good? It, you get the good with the bad always. So, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, you get the good with the bad always. I think that's just like another expression of like people's, you know, things just, until you kind of like love and heal yourself. Yeah. Like that energy just shifts into a different world where it's like now we're like, you know, wanting approval and yeah, you're like worshiping like fame or yeah. like trying to make it or validation, validation. And, and wanting to be, which, you know, I, I understand and kind of had my own issues of transforming that and things like that because I mean, you know, that does, you know, you want to feel like people like what you do Yeah, on some level. Mm hmm. And, uh, so it makes sense, but it's like, once again, I think nothing is more important than your own self love and your own self worth. Yeah. So right. When you start making other people source, yeah, you lose yourself. Yeah. Make other people the source of that love. Yeah. Making other, like, I need you to do this. Yeah. Like, you know what? Maybe I put on my fiance at some level, what you put on the job that you were talking about. Yeah. Like, right. I like how you said that. Like, you know, you're really caring about what these people think of you. Yeah. 
when you yeah. know and, and that, that was honestly, shattered in one moment so and who knows like, and it's yeah. Yeah, everything worked out but who knows maybe that care of how much you cared they felt that and didn't yeah. understand how to deal you know yeah. maybe it came off as you being a little off or something for sure it yeah because that because that energy comes out when you're like when you're really wanting something from someone yeah they're like whoa yeah it's like a guy that simps out for a girl yeah when they want her so bad and you don't even know who she is but yeah and then it's like and then that, it feels that's like, happened to me a bunch where like i'll be like all into a girl and then like or, and i was a you know, kid and then they didn't like me and then i would not be and they'd be like oh i like you now yeah yeah you know? and that and that made me understand not to like take anything uh even this breakup you know with yeah. my fiance we're probably getting back together in a couple of weeks <laughs> I'm just kidding. probably not but uh but it's possible because i don't really take not that i don't validate and take people seriously but the people's emotions especially in like the romantic thing they're kind of all over the place yeah so it's more of like can you i think i i was good with that in like my 20s of like um you know women be like oh i don't like you and i'd be like oh, okay that's yeah. fine yeah oh, i'll Staying see you later and not care and uh yeah. yeah and then they'd be like well i think i like you now because you don't care and i'd be like okay <laughs> that's cool too yeah <laughs> you know? yeah for sure yeah. for sure um shit i was gonna say something uh i kind of lost my train of thought but uh but yeah this is all good stuff dude i kind of want to hear about um this book here okay i got this book from you okay we're out sick we're good on time um so, so should we leave about like 6 15 yeah okay yeah, that's fine um so okay so justin wrote this book was it? hilariously trippy empowering poems revealing you the divine inherent worth within you when did you write this i started it when i was uh 21 22 oh eating shit. a lot of mushrooms Okay. That's where a lot of these poems are, were written. Okay. Uh, but as I've gotten, uh, the first book was like really thick. I think it came out when I was 22 or 23. Okay. And it was, and it sucked for the most part because like I, it was a great title. Like I love the title. It's a really yeah. awesome title. But I wasn't a good enough writer or poet to kind of like make that title worthy of. So there was like some, some of these poems. So it was really, so I just kind of uh, over the years have kind of like um, edited them to yeah. make them. And also, like, took the ones that suck out yeah. and maybe added some more that kind of maybe come through. Yeah. Have you sold a decent amount? Yeah. I mean, uh, no, I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, I don't buy a house off of it. Right. Or like, you know, or right. even a car. But, yeah, I've, I mean, I'll sell them at shows. and Yeah, dude, they're great. People, people buy them. And, yeah, check it out, man. Are they available online anywhere? Yeah, it's available on Amazon. Okay. And I've had them for a while, so, yeah, I've, I've sold some. I mean, Hell I've sold yeah. enough for I'll, me. We'll link it to the thing here. Yeah, that'd be so great. People who, yeah, check it out, dude. Or it's they can a, just hit me up awesome on. They can hit me up on, uh, on um, uh, Instagram, yeah. and I can mail them one. Yeah. Uh, I think buy one. It's a great coffee table book. I'm like reading some of the titles. He's what the fuck? I woke up as Justin Blackburn. Yeah, I wrote that when I was like tripping and like I was like in yeah. my early twenties of like how the fuck am I a person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get there when you're already there. I like that. Why the fuck can't I get it? Um, drunk frat bro in the quantum field. That one's pretty funny. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Just the titles alone, I was like, man. But yeah, I I love it. I love when there's like a, you know, local stuff that's like actually really cool and good thanks man i really appreciate you 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 getting it enjoying it yeah bro yeah um so uh yeah so where did how, so you've been doing comedy for like 10 years you said probably longer than that longer honestly, than that yeah. where do you want to take your uh like comedy career it's a great question i feel like now that the thing with the fion i feel like i'm more invested in like really wanting to do something great with it yeah i feel like i'm getting better i feel like i might do like an hour special okay. at the kava bar i've talked to some people about that so mm -hmm. i would do like an hour and then put it on youtube hell yeah and then see what would happen with that yeah uh, i mean i'd love to take it as far as it'll take me yeah that's cool and i think i'm finally getting good at like uh i feel like i'm getting way better at it yeah yeah, that's and great. Learning myself. It's taken a long time. I remember I'm the question slow I was going to ask. Yeah. Well, I, because, uh, you know, like I asked about the uh, kind of the bad part about, you know, everybody being able to put stuff out there and people kind of chasing approval and likes and, and getting like making it and stuff. Yeah. Like it seems like stand up is like the ultimate irony of that because 
you're trying to get better at it, but by getting better at it, you're hopefully being like, you're finding out who you are. You're being your more authentic self. And like, how do you, how do you deal with the success that may come with that and continue to like do it honestly and authentically, you know, wherever it could take you? Cause like, you know, if, if you skyrocketed to fame, like you could easily become a huge asshole like you see some comics do yeah you know so like stand-ups is really weird irony to me where you like you seek attention and validation but ultimately if you fall in love with that you'll 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 fall off like i i think i mean i that's how i I mean i honestly judge everything based on myself and how i feel about it Mm -hmm. so like if i have a good set it it might like you know i remember i I know from approval i know you've had cody on here cody's a good yeah mine yeah, I love Cody. I love Cody. And I remember recently Cody would be like, Yeah, you did pretty good. I was like, No, it was fucking amazing. <laughs> and he was like, No, you weren't. And we were getting get a fight about it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. What I meant by being amazing is that I did a bit that was new that I felt was like authentic to me. Yeah. And it did okay. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. It wasn't that yeah. I was I had the you know, I did actually think I did tell him I had the best set of the night. Yeah. But that was more to fuck with him. Right. But I felt like in that moment, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So let's say I would go up and get laughs and not feel good. Yeah. I would be like, ah, it was okay. Like yeah. it what I'm not basing my, a lot of comedians do this and that fucks them up. I'm not basing it on if I get laughs or not. Yeah. Cause laughs to me are really fucking easy. Yeah. Cause it's just telling jokes and they want to laugh. Right. I want to do something that's like, and this might sound pretentious artist, but I am one. So yeah. that's why it sounds like that. Yeah. I want to say something that I want to say that I feel is like true to me and that gets laughs at the same time. Sure. So I don't want to just like, yeah, tell a joke. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. So that, that's kind of how I judge it. Yeah. And And if you stay true to that, it's probably, you'd be okay along the, yeah, I think I can't not stay true to that because that's what I, that's who I am. Yeah. And uh, and just, uh, you know, and honestly, I haven't really had much success in comedy. And I mean, like I have success in the sense if I do a show, I'm going to get laughs. Right. But, you know, I don't have like a TV credit or anything right. like that. Right. You know? And and it's it's fine. Right? Yeah. I and mean, you get as much like, do you get a lot out of comedy, like open mics any in any form, basically? Or, yeah, I love or after it. I however love, many times you've done. Like, I, and I think, honestly, breaking up, uh, getting broken up with has inspired me to love it even more yeah because i feel like there was maybe a part of me that was going through the motions and like mm-hmm. i feel like awoke now that i really like i love comedy you know it's yeah it's just something like expressing myself is something i've always just naturally done yeah so maybe i don't really feel how great how much i love it because it's just something yeah i do see i feel that i i feel an intense like joy with comedy yeah like, because i was not expressing myself for so totally. long so long yeah it would come out here and there but never in a pure form like stand up so like anytime i go up I, i'm very i mean i guess if i bomb i don't feel great but it's in general though it's like yeah I and that's feel beautiful that. that's the energy that you want to live with and that's the energy that honestly the last couple of years i i wasn't living with in comedy i was kind of an asshole i kind of yeah. felt like um I wasn't getting enough stuff that I wanted and other people were getting things more when I was like yeah. a better comedian and had a lot of like pretentious. That was the thing that when you're talking about on the deathbed of like the relationship, that was another thing that I realized like, dude, you're, you're like, you care way too much about this shit. Quit. Yeah. Like just love what you're doing. Yeah. Stop like, stop thinking you're not where you need to be. Yeah. In comedy. Yeah. And that would make me, cause I, I, I do think, Part of me, I, I am like a pretentious artist asshole, so I think a lot of stand up kind of sucks. Yeah, because I've seen it a lot before, and it's nothing that like yeah makes me feel great. Yeah, or it's nothing unique and original. Right. So there's this pretentious part of me that's like, yeah. but that part of me only se- isolates me and separates me and turns me into a pretentious asshole. So right. I'm he I'm trying I'm healing that part of me and just being like. Yeah. really open and, and loving everybody. Yeah. And that's been a really great, so I've been enjoying comedy a lot more. Yeah, that's Cause, cool. Because part of me doesn't, I don't know, some open mics and any shit, sometimes that can be, I don't know, I feel like there is a lot of like, I don't know, mediocre comedy. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. And it can kind of be taxing. Yeah. Oh, it can be. And yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it's exhausting sitting through a long show. Totally. You know? 
Um, I mean, there's there's people I really do love to watch. Me too. But like, there's also a lot that I don't know, or just I'm not into it, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm losing that part of me that's like kind of judgmental. That's good. Yeah. 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 Early on, I I I liked everyone. I still do. I mean, I still do. I don't want to be like. You and know. that's beautiful, and that's what you and you. Had, I, that's awesome. Well, I, I kind of just I don't know. I tried to like picture how shitty, you know, I was, and you know, probably still am. To, like, but like when you start anything, you're going to be bad. Oh yeah. It. So like when you see people that aren't as good or like whatever, um, they're they're still figuring it out. So like, totally, and it's cool that they were brave enough to do it. And no, yeah, you know, exactly. Even if I don't love the material or whatever. Yeah, and I think that I got in, and part of that stream of energy was because I did hate comedy on some level when I got into it. Like, I hated, like, the... the, You hated the 90s comics, right? The 90s, yeah, that kind of, like, yeah, like, cliche kind of, yeah. So that that energy kind of spilled onto other people. Okay. And I got to clean cleaning that up because that's not, yeah. So you like Andy Kaufman? Who who, uh, else do you like in terms of, like, top comics? Um... Andy Kaufman was a big influence on me. Uh, a local guy was I used to think was like the funniest dude that I've ever met in my life. Rory Scovel. Dude, yes. I remember like, you know. You like, still like him, right? Yeah. I don't like him as much because I used to kind of like, no offense to Rory. I mean, he's great. But I would I would like, I was like insane. Like I remember like, dude, you're the gr-. Like I would be like completely starstruck by how good yeah. he was. Yeah. Like he's. He's just the fun. Like he would just I go love up Rory Scovel, and dude. make everything funny. Yeah. And I remember like talking to him because I opened for him uh, one time at the Coffee Underground. Nice. And just um, like being like thinking he would like he was God or something. And he'd yeah. be like, I remember him telling me like, Justin, I I bomb. I'm like, really? <laughs> how? How does everybody not just love you all the time? Yeah, yeah. And I was like way too nuts over that dude. Like he yeah. was the funniest fuck. Like Rory can just everything's funny yeah like he's right, absurd right when he gets he there he doesn't absurd. even have to do anything and it's funny dude I, yeah it, it doesn't so, surprise me that you like him i love him too. oh he, dude he was my he's so like, he's the great he's he was like one of my favorites of all he's time. so unconventional like he doesn't follow any of the normal but by being conventional at times too yeah, yeah. like anything like i remember he used to have this joke it's like smart cars those things are tiny call shotgun you're driving the thing <laughs> and it's just it's just the he way he is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, everything he does man it was just the funniest thing have I've you ever seen, seen a set on conan with the guy playing the piano behind him? oh i love that set. that is incredible yeah yeah he like says standing ovation that's nice they're not even standing yeah <laughs> that's rare like no he he's he rory scovel is like just yeah i yeah dude he uh it's funny i kind of feel like i see his influence on some comics like not that that's you know but like you can tell he's from like there's certain people that just do absurd stuff like Travis Thubbin does like a crazy absurd stuff completely unconventional um, yeah I uh yeah I think Cody is a fantastic comedian yeah dude yeah I think Cody's, uh, uh Thursday Moira Gory you know Moira yeah yeah she's she came down here and did a lounge show yeah I like Moira uh she's doing I'm doing a I, I gotta have you on that show I do the I do a run show at the uh Comic oh hell Bar yeah hell yeah on Thursday Okay. Uh, every one, the fourth Thursday of every month. She's, I think she's hilarious. Yeah, Moira's really tall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, she came down. She was at the lounge show here in Greenville. It was, it was her, Cody, Travis. Oh, cool! Awesome lineup. Um, yeah, she's she's hilarious. Um, and then I guess other. Um, let's see, uh, I like Jess a lot in Asheville. Too? Jess Cooley. Oh yeah, Jess is great. Yeah, yeah Jess is hilarious. Yeah. He did this great bit recently where he was like uh, basically being the preacher. Yeah. At uh, at the at the Wednesday night show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Oh, I think I saw him post a clip of that. Yeah, it was yeah. funny. He yeah. was hilarious. He was one of the first Asheville guys to come down to Greenville like during the pandemic when I was starting. Oh, cool. So yeah, I latched onto him pretty quick. I could tell. Yeah, he, Je- he, Jess he, is really funny. I mean, all the there's some there's Asheville, Greenville. They got a lot of yeah. good comedians. No, Asheville's great. The scene is awesome. Um, yeah. You know, I. Uh, yeah, it's fun going up there because it feels like the audiences, the shows, they're all put on really, not, really well. Yeah, like they're kind of for comedy. Uh, I haven't been to all the mics, but the auditorium and uh, auditorium is a great Music show. Hall and slice of life. Like James Herod is a uh, oh great yeah, comedian. dude. Love I love dude. James. Yeah, he's a sweet guy. Yeah, he's like the nicest person. Yeah, he's great. He's so nice. Yeah, like he's yeah. Love love his show. He's great. Uh, a lot of great 
fun people. It's a great time in Asheville for comedy. Yeah. Do you want to stay in Asheville? Or you want to move? Um, I'd probably like to move to um la at some point in time okay but yeah were, were you scoping it out when you did the sandcastle thing or? yeah honestly we did we were we were thinking about you know oh uh, the, the, me and you were me, with the fiance me and the fiance were thinking about moving out there at some point in time okay but, yeah. gotcha that's not gonna that's happen <laughs> unless unless she sees this podcast and please <laughs> give me one more chance Do you want to talk to her i did have a <laughs> funny i did I, I went on this tinder date <laughs> okay with this woman and uh-huh. uh she she got there and she was like, you know, I don't do this much. She's very like kind of heavy energy, very like. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I was like, I don't do this much, and uh, I was like, oh well, I must be really special. Damn, you must really like me if you don't do this much. You're coming with me. She's like, yeah. no, no, that's yeah. not it. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then she like starts complaining about her life uh-huh. really intensely, and I was like trying to, you know, po- I'm a fucking life positive. Yeah. I tried to reframe it for, her and she was yeah. like, "You're gaslighting me. You're invalidating me." And I was like, uh, "Okay." And then, uh, yeah, and yeah. then uh, she left and started like she went and got some beers and came back, and then she went on a rant about how COVID is a uh, you know government conspiracy right, and how the right. world's going to hell and all this yeah. shit. And uh, which you know, I could listen to. I'm not even gonna. I'm not invalidating her theory. Yeah. Much respect to it. It was the. It was the tone. It yeah. was like yeah, life is horrible. And this, yeah. yeah. If it would have been more, a little happier, yeah. I would. I would have anyway. So then I remember thinking like the tone. Yeah. Dude. It was the tone that, of that. It was the, it was the yeah. bitter tone that she was giving. Yeah, me for today. sure. Um, and then I remember thinking like. Damn, I need to text Gianna see if she'll get back with me. This is, <laughs> this is fucking yeah, bad. It's brutal out here <laughs> yeah, in the streets. Like, Jesus dude. Christ. Yeah. Fuck. I don't have enough time to. Do you believe in God? Yes. Yes. I believe we're all God. You believe? Wait, that's not the same thing, though, is it? Yeah. So yeah. We're there's no separate. I believe God, we're all extensions of part God. Part of God. Yeah, we all are God. We all are God. Yeah. Okay. We are all extensions of God. But is the there is there a separate God. no God? Okay, there's no separate God in there's, my mind. There's no separate God. I mean, I guess there's separate gods, and me and you are separate gods talking to each other right now. Yeah, but there's no like. I don't think that there's there there's 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 we're all one. I think God is a consciousness, an energy, a vibration. Okay, so you can tap into different aspects of God, like okay. you can tap into different radio frequencies okay right yeah. so but yeah okay what do you think happens when we die i think that depends on sort of the same thing as like you know what's going to happen to you or whatever i feel like it's about the person's own energy okay so good energy person what happens uh high frequency person depending what they want i guess you know what, what do they want to happen okay oh i don't know so that would not be, die. But. That would be the question. Well, then they can stay alive. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. You could just transcend mortality. You could just. I'm gonna choose. I kind of feel like you can to honestly. not make my cells age. Yeah. Well, I don't feel like cells. You look pretty young. I don't feel 30, like 38, 39, 39. I don't feel like cells. Cells are consistently, you know, recreating themselves. Yeah. That's so you true. get new cells all the time. Right. Right. Yeah. But the both- only problem with the new cells is this is this is the problem though. So I'm deaf in my left ear. I'll, my left ear thinks it's deaf. It actually isn't. It just thinks it is. Right. Okay. So if I'm getting these new cells into this left ear energy, the others, the old cells are telling the new cells, "Hey, you can't hear, motherfucker." Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. then the new cells are coming in listening. Right. So that's the problem with. The, the new cells is the old cells corrupt the new cells. Okay. Right? So that's why it's important for the, to, to tell your new cells what you want okay. and who you are. Yeah. And they'll listen because that's all cells can do is they're just listening to our vibration. They're like our workers, right? Right, right. They listen to what we do and then they act accordingly. Right. So by working out, you're teaching your cells to be like, we need to run from time to time. Totally. So new cells, you better be ready to run too. You're not just going to like sit there and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Should well, we sign up at? Six? Yeah, we probably got to bounce. All right. Dude, I, is there anything else to, to shout out before usually uh, I'll, I'll link your Instagram and stuff. So I got an Instagram life poet comedian. Um, I did tell, I did text Shelty. He said he was going to tell Travis that I'm coming. Oh, so. word. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, a life poet, can be, you know, if anybody needs uh, life coaching out there, hit me up. Life, I uh, put out an album 
last year on Bandcamp called Unlearning White America that's got some good stuff on it. It's Comedy like a, album? It's a musical album. Musical album? Uh, oh, music shit, we even s- talk about music. Slash uh, sort of poetry music. Okay. Um, that's cool. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I got this book. It's called It's Hard to Get There When You're Already There. If you want one, it's on Amazon or you can hit message me. Oh, but yeah, yeah. I missed the title up. It's hard to get there when you're already there. Well, thank That's you for having me on. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Thanks a lot. This was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Great. Hopefully people enjoyed it too. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Love guys. It. Yeah. See you next time. Awesome. <laughs>